Throne. Throne, yeah. And, and we're supposed to say Theron. Yes, I thought Theron would be much easier for people. It looks orthographically French. It is, yes. Your father then was of French derivation. Of French, yes. Yeah, but he yeah. was Afrikaans. Yes. And what was his first name? Charles. And how did you acquire your rather interesting first name? I didn't realize that it was a special name until people started asking me in interviews, you know, where did you get your name from? And I called my mom up in South Africa and I said, where, how did you come up with my name? And she just went, I don't know, your dad was named Charles. <laughs> Charlize. I was like, okay, that makes complete sense. And what was your father's profession? He was an engineer. When I was about four, he started his own road construction company. And yeah. your mother's name is? Garda. What? <laughs> Gerda. How do you spell that? G-E-R-D-A. It's not Gerda, it's just Gerda in American. I see. What was your first language? I went to an Afrikaans school and got all of my schooling in Afrikaans. Had English as a second language, but where I grew up, nobody spoke English. So um, it was a language that I didn't really speak um, that much. As anyone who has watched this series knows, one of its principal themes is dance. How old were you when you began studying? I was around four. And where did you study? I studied uh, with a wonderful teacher called Michelle Phillips in Benoni. She just had such an influence on my life. I was an only child, you know, growing up on this farm. My imagination sometimes got the best of me, and you, sometimes it was hard to kind of settle me because, you know, things kind of got a little crazy in my head sometimes. And uh, ballet was the first thing that centered me as a human being. Did you have a nanny? Yes. Is yes. she African? Or? Yes. She was South Sioux too. Well, she is South Sioux. She's still alive. When your mother was very busy at a construction site, didn't you stay overnight with her? Yeah, my mom didn't want me to stay alone in the, in the big house, and she lived um, in uh, her own little house just off the side of the farmhouse. And she, uh, she, was, she was in many ways a mother to me. And uh, <laughs> okay, this is maybe too early. <laughs> she was a wonderful woman, a great teacher, and uh, um, a great storyteller, and also the most superstitious woman I've ever been around in my life. <laughs> Didn't your mother used to put you on the floor to sleep so that you wouldn't intrude on their household? Yes. And then what would happen when your mother left? She would, she would pick me up and put me on her bed, which she would build up with bricks and, and, uh, and paint cans. And so it was really, really high. And the reason for that was because the South Sutus believe that there's this little creature called the Tokolosi. And he's really tiny, and he crawls into your ear, and he is, he is the one responsible for evil, to bring evil to you. And so when you sleep on the floor, the Tokolosi has a chance to crawl into your ear, which she probably was there already, but... <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, yeah, she would, she would pick me up and put me in, and then in the morning, she would put me back on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> She's a wonderful woman. You've said I was introduced to films at a very young age. Mm -hmm. By whom? My mom. And how so? Would she take you to the movies with her? Yeah. Um, we had a drive-in theater um, about it. In Benoni? No. It was... It was <laughs> Benoni's starting to sound really good, don't you think? <laughs> Sounding like the Paris of South Africa. <laughs> it was about 45 minutes outside of Benoni, and um, every Friday night we would, we would go. Didn't she wrap you in a blanket on occasions? When it was an R-rated film, because <laughs> she didn't want to drive all the way back and not see a movie. <laughs> <laughs> she, um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I've learned some of my greatest life lessons that way, so, you know. Did you see Fatal Attraction by <laughs> yes. What was the lesson learned from that? Well, the great, you know, story of the birds and the bees and where babies come from, James. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. I'm unfamiliar with it. Would you fill us in? <laughs> No, you actually... And the well, elevator has never been the same for me, you know? And this, and this to me, I, I look at an elevator and I go, they're making babies! <laughs> um, what led you to uh, go to boarding school in Johannesburg? Well, Johannesburg is an hour and a half from where I live, and, and to commute every day would have just been crazy. And 
you know, you have, you have school till about 2.30 in the afternoon, and then you have ballet classes till 8 o'clock at night. And so I stayed at the boarding school. And studied ballet? Yes, ballet and flamenco. Very seriously you did, right? Yes, yes, um, that, was, that was it. I was, that's all I wanted to do. Did you ever perform? Yeah, that was the great thing about going to this art school was that we got to dance with the companies and we got to travel and, and, and annually we did shows. The thing with me was I was always too tall to be a ballerina, really. On point you would be what, over six feet? Yeah, technically too I wasn't the strongest dancer that the school had, but when I got on stage and I was doing Swan Lake, I was the swan. Make no mistake. I mean, that was just... <laughs> now, my great moment has arrived. Um, because of my long affection for dance, my, <laughs> my years of study, I would like to ask this audience whether they would like to see Charlize and me do a little bit of ballet. see my problem? <laughs> That's why she didn't go on to ballet, stardom, and this is why I didn't go on to ballet, stardom. <laughs> Nevertheless, one never forgets, and we're going to show you just one beautiful arabesque. <laughs> Tonight, I am the happiest man on earth. <laughs> That's all there is to it. What took you back to Benoni? A lot of, a lot of stuff kind of happened around that, 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 uh, that time of my life. My friends and um, mother decided it would be really funny to, to uh, sign me up for a modeling contest. <laughs> The prize was basically a contract in, in Milan, and um, so I think it was three weeks before I turned 16, I, uh, I was whisked off to, to Milan to go and be a model. As this series <laughs> goes into its 10th year, the commonest theme by far for all of us, beginning with me, is parental loss by death or divorce. Many of our guests believe it was a key element in their formation, both as people and as artists. I know it's difficult, and I will not ask you to dwell on it at all, but uh, it is obviously part of your life and your makeup. Uh, there was a tragedy when you were 15, mm -hmm. and that was what? Um, well, my, my father, unfortunately, was, a, was sick. He was an alcoholic um, for most of his life. Um, and, uh, you know, I, in our family, we just kind of lived with it. And um, it just got worse and worse. And uh, when I was 15 one night, he, uh, he, uh, he's, he, uh, yeah, he, he kind of came home one night. <laughs> and, uh, and things got a little bad at our house. And, and uh, he was shot. Yeah, very, I mean, you know, you just, you don't think these things ever really will happen to you, and you always think they kind of happen to other people. Um, but, uh, you know, it was really unfortunate, very unfortunate thing that happened, and it was a huge tragedy in my life. And eventually the, his death was considered to be in self an, defense, act, an yes. act of self-defense. Yes. How did a 15-year-old girl deal with an event of such mammoth proportions? Um, you don't necessarily think your father who loves you is going to show up one night, you know, wanting to kill you. So, <laughs> you, I think when you're, when you're 15, all of these things are, um, you, you just can't expect to kind of um, understand anything really. I think m most of it kind of just happens with time. And, and the great thing was that 
my mom and I ha had a really close relationship, and thank God I had that. I was blessed in that sense. But time, you know, just it, it takes a lot of time, a lot of time. You have very powerful emotional abilities as an actor. Thank you. Without question. I would assume that having gone through some things in your life that were very powerful, this is a, it is a resource for you. I've been fortunate enough to be kind of brought to this place where I can actually have this experience with acting um, where I can make sense of my life. And maybe that's therapy for other people or meditation. For me, it's, it's experiencing emotion, confusion, uh, loss, or any emotion through a character. Who ran the road construction business after your father's death? My mother. My mother took it over. Um, we also realized uh, after m my father died that the, the business, that we were basically bankrupt and we had nothing and um, the banks were on her and uh, within five years my, my mother with her own two hands brought that company back out of debt. You have said about her, because of her I've always thought that anything was possible. Oh yeah. I, I would be an insult to humanity if I grew up with somebody like her and didn't think that. I think it's time for us to acknowledge uh, a very remarkable woman. May I introduce you to Gerda Theron? <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>